Megalodon, the monstrous, enigmatic leviathan of the deep that has captured our imaginations for decades. From terrifying tales to jaw-dropping Hollywood blockbusters, the legend of the Megalodon shark has sent shivers down our spines and fueled countless debates. But today we're diving deep into the ocean of facts and science to uncover the truth behind the myth. No teeth. Sharks have a thing for teeth. They don't just keep one set for life like we do. Nope, they're like nature's ultimate dentists, shedding and replacing teeth throughout their lives. So if you ever decide to go beachcombing, chances are you'll stumble upon shark teeth, especially from the ones that call the nearby waters home. When it comes to the Megalodon, our knowledge primarily comes from one specific thing, teeth. Yep, fossilized teeth are like the breadcrumbs left behind by this ancient predator. They've even identified fossilized Megalodon poop, which they fancy calling coprolites. Now that's one way to leave your mark in history, right? We've got a couple of other Megalodon clues too. A few vertebrae columns have surfaced. These massive teeth and bits of skeleton have been found in rocks dating anywhere from 23 million to around 2.6 million years ago. After that, zero Megalodon teeth. None, nada, zilch. You might be wondering why that's significant. Well, here's the thing. If the Megalodon were still around today, we'd not only be finding Megalodon teeth all over the place, just like we do for other sharks, but we'd also have those teeth turning into fossils over time, preserving them for us to find. Imagine walking along the beach and stumbling upon a giant razor-sharp Megalodon tooth from just a few years ago. That would be quite the sight. And guess what? Megalodon teeth are distinct. They're more than just big. They have unique features that set them apart from other extinct sharks and even the mighty great white shark. So even if researchers found a tooth today, they could confidently tell if it belonged to a megalodon. No bite marks. Fossilized teeth of the megalodon are quite common, but did you know that fossils also exist that give us clues about its feeding habits? There are fossils of whale bones with megalodon tooth slashes and bites in them. These fossilized signs of interaction between megalodon and its prey are fascinating, but there's a catch. These fossils are much rarer than just the teeth. We have none of these types of fossils that are younger than 2.6 million years old. These fossils tell us that megalodon's interactions with whales were a thing of the past. No recent fossils with tooth slashes or bites from the last 2.6 million years. This raises a crucial question. Why don't we see these bite marks in more recent whale fossils? Could it be that Megalodon's presence in our oceans gradually faded away? We don't have any contemporary evidence from carcasses or bodies of whales that suggests bite marks or wounds consistent with the attacks of a massive predator like Megalodon. Think about it. If Megalodon were still around, wouldn't we expect to see some signs of its interactions with modern whale populations? Would occur everywhere. One of the standout characteristics of the Megalodon's history is its widespread presence. This ancient giant wasn't playing hide-and-seek, it was a globe-trotter. From warm tropical waters to the chilling depths, these apex predators had a passport to every ocean. Unlike rare species that tend to be found in specific limited locations, Megalodons wrote their story across the world's aquatic canvas. If these colossal creatures were still prowling our seas, we would have spotted them by now. Think about it. Our planet's oceans have become a playground for exploration and adventure. From deep-sea submersibles to advanced marine research vessels, we've charted vast stretches of underwater terrain. Megalodons, with their gargantuan size, wouldn't exactly be masters of subtlety. If they existed today, they'd be crashing marine parties all over the place. The keys to uncovering new or rediscovered species often lie in their rarity, numbers, and territory. Take the coelacanth, for instance. This prehistoric fish made a surprise splash when it was rediscovered in the deep caves near southern Africa and Indonesia. The coelacanth's unique story stands in stark contrast to the megalodon's saga. While the coelacanth prefers secluded underwater hideouts, megalodons were like the ultimate ocean explorers, embracing the open waters with a global gusto. Let's talk about the Yeti crab. This enigmatic crustacean emerged from obscurity when scientists stumbled upon its cozy abode, hydrothermal vents. The reason we hadn't met the Yeti crab before was because we hadn't ventured into its steamy neighborhood. But here's the catch. 
These deep sea encounters are far from the shallow waters where tropical vacations take us. So, when comparing the Megalodon's situation to the Yeti crab's revelation, it's like comparing a bustling metropolis to a hidden hamlet, not lurking in the depths. Fossil records suggest it roamed the warm tropical and subtropical waters, making it a dominant predator millions of years ago. Now, one of the most intriguing mysteries surrounding the Megalodon is its sudden disappearance from the fossil record. Many theories have emerged, and one in particular suggests that the oceans cooled down, leading to its extinction. To truly grasp why the Megalodon isn't lurking in the depths, we need to consider its temperature preference. This apex predator had a strong liking for warm waters, seeking out tropical and subtropical regions. This preference was like a heat-seeking missile, driving it to thrive in the balmy conditions of its time. However, the theory of the oceans cooling down contradicts this preference and could be a significant reason for its decline. The idea that the megalodon is hiding in the cold, unexplored depths of our oceans. The truth is, this notion doesn't align with what we know about its habitat. Imagine a megalodon, a colossal shark stretching up to 60 feet, trying to survive in freezing pitch black waters far below the surface. It just doesn't add up. The megalodon's ideal environment was closer to the surface, where it could hunt for its favored prey like whales and seals. The temperature preference isn't the only factor to consider. Let's also think about the physics of the megalodon's massive body. With its sheer size, the megalodon would require a substantial amount of food to sustain itself. This would have been much more attainable in the shallower waters where prey was abundant. As an apex predator, it would have taken advantage of the ecosystems teeming with life near the surface. Other huge sharks exist. Some massive sharks that are very much real and swimming around in our oceans today. We've got the sleeper shark, the Greenland shark, the basking shark, the whale shark, the great white shark, and the seven gill shark. These incredible creatures are a remarkable sight. And guess what? They're often mistaken for the megalodon due to their impressive sizes. These sharks are indeed massive. However, none of them even come close to the estimated lengths of a megalodon. The sizes of these contemporary giants are awe-inspiring, but they fall short when compared to the sheer enormity of the megalodon. It's not just about size, it's also about shape. The megalodon is believed to have had a distinct and massive body structure. But when we examine the shapes of the sleeper, Greenland, basking, whale, great white, and seven gill sharks, there are noticeable differences. The megalodon's proportions and form are simply not replicated in any of these modern species. There's an intriguing update to consider. It turns out that the largest known whale sharks can actually reach lengths comparable to those estimated for the megalodon. Now that's quite a surprise. But even with this new perspective, the puzzle isn't completely solved. The differences in anatomy and behavior between the two species still raise questions should be a lot of megalodon. The last known fossil tooth of the megalodon dates back a whopping 2.6 million years. Now, for a population to survive that long, there needs to be a sustainable number of these creatures. But how do we estimate this? Well, considering the megalodon's massive size, and assuming the largest females can reach a weight of around 65.5 tons, we can calculate the potential global numbers. Using data from relationships between size and abundance in carnivorous mammals, since we lack the exact data for shark abundance, we're looking at a range of approximately 700,000 to 1.5 million megalodons. Keep in mind, these are just educated guesses based on available data. We're considering a range from 50% to 100% of the ocean being warm enough for megalodon to thrive. Yes, it's a rough estimate, but it's important to illustrate the potential scenario. Even if we lean towards the lower end of this spectrum, we're still looking at a substantial number of megalodons lurking beneath the waves. Of course, the megalodon's numbers might have dwindled if they were on the brink of extinction. However, in the modern world, the main cause for the decline of large marine animals is often human hunting. If megalodons were indeed real and present, it's likely they would have ended up in fishing nets and markets. But this isn't the case, which leads us to a thought-provoking question. So what's the point here? Well, let's sum it up. The megalodon is said to have existed for a staggering amount of time since the last known fossil evidence. And to support such longevity, there should be a thriving population. Based on calculations and estimations, 
we should have seen many of these massive predators swimming around. The lack of megalodon remains in fishing catches or markets raises eyebrows. If this shark truly existed up until recently, shouldn't we have found more tangible evidence? Shouldn't we have seen these colossal creatures being hauled up in fishing nets or their jaws being sold as trophies? Environmental conditions. The megalodon's reign ended during the Pliocene period, around 2.5 to 3 million years ago. The key players in this grand finale were the changing environmental conditions. First up, let's talk temperature. The waters that the megalodon prowled in were colder than its ideal comfort zone. As temperatures shifted, the megalodon found itself in an environment that didn't quite suit its warm water preferences. Imagine trying to thrive in a habitat that's just a bit too chilly. It's like trying to sunbathe in the snow. The megalodon's menu primarily consisted of mid-sized whales. But guess what? Those whales went extinct. Poof! Gone. Without its preferred food source, the megalodon faced a major hurdle. It's like being at an all-you-can-eat buffet, only to find out they're serving a single type of salad. The ancestors of modern great white sharks and killer whales entered the scene, and they were fierce competitors. These newcomers outcompeted the megalodon for what little remained in terms of food. Think of it like a race for the last slice of pizza, and suddenly, a bunch of ravenous friends show up. Remember those cozy, warm coastlines where the megalodon used to establish its nurseries? Well, these landscapes have transformed over time. Coastal areas have shifted miles inland due to various geological changes. The megalodon's once perfect nesting spots are now far from the shoreline, making it even harder for these colossal predators to continue their legacy. So you might be wondering, but wait, why do we find megalodon fossils all over the world if they're extinct? Great question. Fossils are like time capsules, preserving the remnants of ancient life. Ongoing research helps us uncover more about these incredible creatures and the environments they lived in. Fake videos and documentaries. Discovery Channel's controversial documentary. Megalodon, the monster shark lives. Many folks still believe this was the real deal, but my friends, it was not. The original documentary had a hidden disclaimer and it caused quite a stir. Snopes, the fact-checking wizards, have a fantastic post about this, proving it's fake. Remember that photo from the documentary showing a megalodon alongside World War II U-boats? Well, it turned out to be heavily doctored archival footage of real U-boats. But even if we ignore that, the scale in the photo doesn't match current scientific analysis. There's no way to determine the distance between the megalodon and the photographer, nor is there any reference object for size comparison. Yet the documentary claimed this megalodon was a whopping 64 feet long. That's almost as tall as a six-story building. It's far beyond what current science tells us about the megalodon's size. Throughout history, we've seen countless examples of decayed whale and basking shark carcasses being mistaken for mysterious sea monsters. One famous case was the Zuiomaru carcass in 1977. It was dredged up by a Japanese fishing trawler, and conspiracy theorists had a field day, claiming it was a prehistoric plesiosaur. But guess what? Scientists confirmed it was the carcass of a basking shark. The lower jaw and dorsal fins had rotted away, giving it a misleading appearance. The Zuiomaru carcass isn't unique. Scientists are presented with unidentified marine carcasses all the time, each with wild stories attached to them. Some claim they're biblical sea serpents, fairy tale monsters, prehistoric reptiles, and of course, the mighty megalodon. These cases are often referred to as globsters, a term coined by cryptozoology enthusiasts. But they are usually misunderstood or decomposed sea creatures. From the puzzling absence of recent evidence to the tantalizing clues left behind in fossil records, we've dissected every angle of the megalodon mystery. We've explored the astounding capabilities of its potential prey, the ocean's changing dynamics, and the limitations of our own knowledge. As we sail back to reality from the sea of speculation, remember that while the megalodon may not swim among us today, its legacy continues to captivate our imaginations and ignite our curiosity about the uncharted realms of the past. If you're hungry for more maritime mysteries or thirsting for knowledge about the hidden wonders of the natural world, Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. 
Join our ever-growing community of curious minds, where the pursuit of truth and discovery knows no bounds.